everybody, Alicia Merlo here coming at you with a countdown to GVAS Fall Summit 2020, where I get to give you an early introduction and sneak peek into our incredible faculty coming up at the summit. And by day, I am the Senior Director of Professional Relations at Color Science. And my side hustle these days is to be able to have the chance to meet our fantastic faculty, learn a little bit about them, share with you what they're going to be talking about and why it's so important you catch their sessions at the conference this year. So right now, I have the pleasure of bringing to you Allison Avila. She is the Assistant Managing Partner at Gordon and Reese in the Westchester office. That's Westchester, New York, which is my home stocking grounds, even though I'm a California girl nowadays. So Allison, thank you so much for taking some time to let us get to know you a little bit today. Well, thank you very much for having me, and I'm really very excited to take part in the conference. Um, and so ask away, let me know what information you um, need. I'm excited to present all of the information to um, everybody that is going to be taking part of this conference. I think the information that, that they will learn is going to be invaluable to them. Um, so we'll offer you a sneak peek about what you can expect to uh, gain and what knowledge you'll learn from, from, the, um, you know, from, from the conference itself and from my discussion. Awesome. Well, I want to kind of peel back a little bit about your passion for aesthetics. Because when I was learning more about you online, I just found it so interesting that you really have an expertise in this field, that you've dedicated time to your practice to the aesthetic industry. And that's a huge, huge kind of area of specialty, right? Because there are unique business models and setups, and every state's a little different, as we know. So can you share with me a little bit of what started your interest in medical aesthetics? Uh, partially, it was because of vanity. Um, so I actually started to go to have services performed. And, and this is years and years ago. Um, and as I were, was having services, um, it really came to my understanding that most practices, most practitioners had no idea who could do what, um, what the regulatory was, and they had no idea about really what healthcare and the fact that actually injectables and Botox and even laser treatments are actually considered the practice of medicine in many states. Um, and so I ended up um, really investing you know, years worth of time in learning the regulations throughout all of the 50 states because people really needed the help. Um, you know, some people were getting cited um, for violations of practicing outside the scope of their, um, of, of their license. Uh, you know, competition is fierce, and so a lot of competitors would, um, you know, make complaints against other practices or other spas. No one knew how to open up a medical spa. Uh, no one knew what the corporate practice of medicine was or, um, uh, whether you could actually hire a physician if you're a non-physician to to open up a spa, who could own a spa. So um, throughout the course of years, then, um, you know, the passion just developed more and more. Um, I recognized that there was a need and there was really no, no um, attorneys in this area. So a lot of people would go to, say, their regular business attorney to say, hey, open up this corporation for me. I'm going to form a medical spa. And if you go to an attorney that doesn't really have any knowledge about what the industry is and what the regulations are, then they were often opening up corporations that were in violation of what the regulations were. So um, it, uh, it, it just evolved. And then I started um, writing a lot of articles about it because there's really just so much, there's such a breadth of information that people really need to know, um, even including in medical practice acts and nursing practice acts and um, you know, just disputes between the two boards. So um, uh, yeah, you know, I started just writing articles and uh, speaking at conferences and then um, really became a, 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 just a, a need because the industry is growing exponentially. Even, even we were just hit with COVID, you know, some businesses, you know, stalled for a little bit of time, but I really have not seen um, many people go under 
because the need is so desperate for, and, you know, I think now, even, you know, after COVID, now everybody's really booming because, you know, look, we, you know, nobody was able to do anything for, you know, for, for months. I mean, I know that was the first thing I did. <laughs> as soon as yeah, the treatments are timely at every three months, we should be getting them. And we were locked down for at least almost six. So. Yeah, exactly. Well, I love that you married something that you personally were vested and cared about, right? Your own personal kind of health and and well-being um, and the services that you had with your expertise and you saw that need and I think that's just really a statement of you know uh, somebody that looks and sees where their talents right and their expertise can be applied to an, a community we'll just say that the aesthetics community that really didn't have a single-minded resource with just their requirements their compliance their guidelines and everything in mind so kudos to you for really focusing on that and being a resource and you said across all 50 states my goodness and i know just from my little bit because i only play a lawyer on tv right i'm one of those but that every state really has their own nuances so that's a, that's a lot of you know knowledge that you've had to you know kind of research yeah i mean you know it look it took it took um uh, a significant amount of time to go through all of the regulations and even calling, you know, certain boards. Um, but I then created uh, a, a legal opinion for all of the 50 states, which will then identify, you know, who can own a medical spa, um, uh, you know, who can fire a laser, who can do injectables, you know, how many physicians can, uh, or, or nurse practitioners can a physician supervise, and, or are they independents? I mean, so it's really very comprehensive um, a, a opinion for for all of the fifty states that that is available to um, you know members of the conference uh, you know should they choose and I'll give you the contact information um, you know at, at at the end so that if somebody has a specific question then they can um, you know they, I, I can send them the, the legal opinion. That's, um, that's one of the ben and, and, uh, sorry I don't I don't want to cut you off but one of the benefits um, for me is. Um, the assistant managing partner of the Westchester office, right, as you said, in New York, but we, um, um, the firm that I'm with is actually the only firm in the country that has offices in all 50 states. And so um, if there are issues, and I have, I have clients all over the country, but if there's some sort of a local issue where, um, say, somebody is being sued and, and they need to go to court um, for it, and say in California, I have partners or associates in California that will assist me and handle it in California, you know, with, with my guidance, but there, so it's, it, it, so there's local knowledge as well as not just my own um, knowledge. You are a national network of legal eagles for the aesthetic. Exactly. That's fantastic. So let's dive into a little bit about what your talk is going to be at GVAS, because I feel like you could give a or a college course on all the things you need to know to open up your aesthetic practice. But there's one area that you're focusing on that you and I chatted a little bit about before that is something I don't think many people think about. And I'm going to say the title of your talk and then I'm going to allow you to give us a sneak peek. Don't give all the secrets away because we want them to really hear you in the moment and when you're presenting it to that. But your talk is entitled, um, it is entitled The Necessity of Securing Your Brand. So what does that mean and what are you going to be sharing with the, those who are attending your session? So the reason why I chose that topic is because what, what I am encountering um, frequently lately is that many of my clients have um, incorporated or have filed for a business organization uh, using a name. And then um, they have not done any type of a trademark search or um, you know, like a branding search to determine whether or not somebody else actually has that name. So even though you might be able to get that name at a corporate level, somebody else may already have that trademark. So what is happening is that people are investing a significant amount of money in their um, logos and their colors and their names and their web designs only to have it backfire on them because somebody else will have already had that trademarked. And there's a lot of names that are very similar. 
right now because there aren't really that many variations. Everybody wants spa, aesthetics, wellness, you know, regenerative medicine, you know, anti-aging. So, you know, all of the names are really quite similar. Um, so if you invade somebody else's space, then you get hit with a lawsuit for trademark infringement. Um, and a lot of people think that doing trademark searches before you actually even, you know, once you decide on a name, before you actually do the incorporation, um, they think it's expensive. And, you know, I want to get the point across that really it isn't, it, it's not an expensive endeavor to do the trademark search. Um, you know, we do intellectual property trademark searches and, you know, and assist with branding. So I want people to, to understand the fact that, um, you know, you're, you're putting your company at risk if you don't do certain steps before you actually decide and create your whole design. The other aspect of the importance of branding is because things are so competitive right now, um, you need to be able to set yourself apart um, from everybody else and have um, consistency within your brand so that when people come to you, they know that you are credible, reliable, that they're going to get quality service each time that they go. And so there are certain aspects that go into the whole branding process and what is, what is it that you want to convey to your patients or to your clients. Um, and we'll go through some of the steps of how you can do that um, and be successful and um, you know, create the brand, protect your brand and you know, do, the, do the trademarking. And then everything else goes um, you know, a lot of people are doing private label nowadays as well. So branding is going to be very significant in terms of your, you know, your private labeling and, you know, how do you want to present that to your, to your patients? I love this because I, I was thinking when you were talking about you know, so many names the same, and I cannot tell you how many younger you med spas or the new med spas, right? Or advanced dermatology yeah. that I have heard of in my 20 years. So such a such an insightful session that you're going to be having, and I hope you'll touch on. You just can say yes or no because we want people to tune in. But you know, it's one thing if you're starting off this endeavor, right? And I'm about to open a spa, and I learn about what is important about really protecting my brand that I'm building. Um, but will you share what people can do? Because what if they've been in the market and they've had their business open for a number of years? Will they get wisdom on how to? make sure that their brand is protected no matter how long their business. Yes. Um, it doesn't, it, I, without giving, I mean, I, I, I guess I'll just say it right now. <laughs> I mean, this is because that's just going to be a very small part of it. So um, it doesn't really matter how long you've been in, in, in business um, before you uh, decide that you want to trademark, okay, or, or now start creating, creating a brand because as long as you do it, um, you then will start to get a following. Um, the only issue is if you have already been in the space for quite some time um, and you haven't really set aside a brand for yourself or you really haven't focused on really trying to have a, like a cohesive package, um, it's just a little bit more difficult because you then need to sort of get the name out there. You know, maybe you have to change your website. Um, you know, maybe you have to change a little bit of things, which get, not that it gets complicated, but it's just a little bit more, um, a little bit more work that's involved in it. But there is nothing that prevents anybody from taking the steps now, regardless of how long they've been in, in, in practice. I know a lot of eyes will be open, ears and minds too, when they attend the session at you. that's for sure, Allison. So to like summarize like the top line, like one or two things, it sounds like they're going to learn. It's important to, you know, make sure that your brand is protected. And then the steps to, to, to take, you know, in working with you or somebody that has the legal expertise to guide them correctly. I think that was a big aha. You know, we always have the friend, family friend who's an attorney is going to set up my business for me, right? I'm sure you've heard mm -hmm. that quite a few times. Is there anything else that, that would be like a one, like other thing that people will get when they come watch your session at GMAC? Well, um, ordinarily, um, 
I don't always stick to a script. <laughs> so there will be a lot of tidbits and a lot of other information that I will discuss, really just in terms of, of, of practicing in general. Um, but I do think that one other um, uh, item of importance is going to be in insurance uh, that we'll discuss. And insurance is going to be very um, uh, important as well because you not only when you're protecting your brand or, or your you know trademarking what you also have to do is you have to have insurance to protect you if you are using somebody else's trademark and you get sued because those are very expensive lawsuits um and people are very very aggressive about protecting their own brand um you know we know even copywriting one of the things that you'll take away from this uh, um, is not only um, with trademarking and branding, but you know, uh, copywriting. So we know Getty Images all the time. If somebody is taking photographs from Getty Images or images from some other website and putting it on their own. So I'll talk a little bit about those, um, you know, the precautions that you really need to take because you always need to get permission in order to be able to use those photographs. And Getty Images is very, very, aggressive in prosecuting people who do not pay them for those images. Um, so I'm going to, you know, I will probably, um, um, ex I, well, I know I will because it's just my nature. <laughs> so uh, I will expand on certain other things that you really have to be cognizant of um, and, uh, when, when you're doing your marketing. Excellent. That is the teaser right there. It sounds like there's a wealth of knowledge, Allison, that you're bringing to this conference. And you share just a little bit, but there is so much more to be heard. For those that are watching this video before the conference, I want to check you out. Where can they find more information about you? Uh, so you can go on the Gordon and Reese. Um, uh, it's grsm.com website. And on there is my bio. Uh, it goes through everything that I have done since, um, since I started practicing. Um, in fact, uh, when I first started practicing, I actually, I, all I did was defense litigation. Um, and so when I'm speaking about these things, even through the healthcare uh, industry and aesthetics, I'm always looking at it through the mind of a defense litigator because I do trials. I, I you know, I've defended uh, physicians in medical malpractice cases and you know, for um, people before the Board of Medicine where they're, with they're being cited for violations. So everything that I do is with the mindset of protecting because I know what would happen at the time of trial and how to defend the case. So um, that isn't just another aside, but um, anyway, so that, that shows you, you know, my bio, my publications, um, you know, if anybody has any other questions or, you know, uh, anything, uh, even after the conference, you know, my email will be available. Um, and certainly, um, I used to use LinkedIn. Uh, I, 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 I don't know. I mean, I just stopped using it for some reason. But um, anyhow, so yeah. yeah. Right? Great. Yeah. We'll, list, we'll link your website for sure. Um, and then uh, in the comments for this video. There'll also be ways um, for people to register for GVAX. If you have not, there'll be a link here to get your tickets. Allison, I'm definitely sitting on your sessions because I want to increase Thanks. my knowledge on how when I'm talking with physicians and med spa and business owners that I can guide them to somebody who's got that experience and expertise. And GVAX is really fortunate to have somebody who has such a depth of knowledge and experience to be able to share with those attendees. So I think taking the time with me tonight. It was great to meet you in person. Thank and you too. With okay, thank you so much. Looking forward to it. Bye.